Did you know that ChatGPT can help you generate code? Yes, of course, you already knew that, everyone does. But did you know that ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot might generate vulnerable code that can be hacked into? Probably yes, you likely already knew that just as well. And there has been tons of research on this. In fact, take a look, this is a Black Hat talk from last year, 2022, where Hammond Pierce and I think Ben Tan went through a ton of experiments with ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, I think they specifically focused on Copilot, and tried to see what vulnerable code would it generate right off the bat? This has been one of the critiques of GitHub Copilot especially, and that, hey, it's going to be pulling data and the models that it's trained off of just from GitHub, the GitHub repositories that are all public and on the open internet that could very well have mistakes, flaws, and vulnerabilities. It might not be strict CVEs or things that just have an off-the-shelf exploit, but even just generally bad security practice. Using a deny list rather than an allow list or trying to pipe things into the shell, like run code from the command line that could be tampered with, manipulated in one way or another from user input. In fact, one day, you know, it would be kind of really cool and a lot of fun to just trawl through GitHub and see how many things like public repositories can we find that use dangerous functions or have bad code and can be just totally exploited. Now, here's the kicker. This presentation, the research from Black Hat and a lot of the other conversations that I've seen about this are about a year old or maybe older. In today's world right now, you can generally get basically sometimes good secure code? And I want to acknowledge that. ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot have obviously gotten better and are going to continue getting better, but they might overlook something that is just kind of inevitable. And here's the tidbit you probably didn't know, because at the surface level, code might look secure. In fact, we can put this to the test by asking ChatGPT to review some of my code. Now I know, intentionally vulnerable, these are four capture the flag challenges, but I want to see what it finds and what it doesn't find, if anything. And then we'll let ChatGPT try its hand at creating some software and seeing is it secure or are there vulnerabilities lurking in there somewhere that might not even be visible to us at first glance. So I'm in my Kali Linux virtual machine and I'm going to grab some code that I wrote for a just hacking competition in the Jeopardy challenges for the CTFs that we've been hosting. And one of these challenges was called Transfer. It was based off of the Move It transfer exploitation, the uh, incidents that we saw across the security landscape. And I just want to take a look at how this thing comes together. Now there are write-ups available for this, you can find it online, but if you take a look, the app here, the application, was meant to be just a program that would allow you to upload or transfer files. We'll dig into the source code in just a second, but let me show you how this thing works so you can kind of get a feel for it. Let me do a docker build, and I'll do a docker run tack p on transfer as that name. Localhost 5000, this is the transfer login. Now we do not have any username or password to be able to log in with, so there wasn't going to be a whole lot of operations that they would be able to do as the player to break into this, but you might be able to do some SQL injection to manipulate the database. This source code is given to the player or the users that got to see this application so they could see, hey, some things present in the database or users that are created, and there weren't any, but you could at least see the functionality of the application. In fact, the login page that does have known SQL injection by just passing in the username and password that are supplied in the request. However, they are ran through a function called dbclean, like database clean to try to sanitize things. However, it's bad sanitization. It just tries to remove certain characters or replace them with others. Ultimately, this could be exploited in a very similar way as the real Move It Transfer application that we saw beat up and exploited through Memorial Day weekend of 2023. They pull from active sessions, they try to stage some files in the API, and then they get to do some deserialization attacks, or in which case they're able to execute code. Now, if I copy and paste all of this, can I pass it to ChatGPT and have it find a vulnerability? Or multiple vulnerabilities? Can it determine the full X exploit chain to be able to run code here. I'll say, is this code safe? And I'll put some backticks here and slap it in. Upon inspecting the code, there are several potential issues and vulnerabilities. SQL injection. Okay, so it immediately sees the SQL injection given the username and password uh, that we were able to see from the login prompt, and it notes the dbclean function, which I just described, is insufficient to protect against SQL injection. 
blah, blah, blah. It goes into some session handling, password security. It denotes the pickling, so we can do some deserialization, and it might be able to determine that, oh, you could, uh, oh, actually inject malicious data into the files table that could execute arbitrary code when the pickled data is loaded. Next up, let's try another challenge. I had a museum challenge that I had created for the same capital flag competition. This is another Flask application, and while there are no SQL injection opportunities, it is rich with some server-side request forgery, being able to retrieve unique artifacts in the museum. Only if they are images, in that case. You have to look for specific images, and somehow you have to be able to bypass that to be able to get data, and you might be able to retrieve anything else that you might want. However, you have to trick it for some of the local requests through server-side request forgery, RFI, remote file inclusion, blah, blah, blah. Let's give that to chat GPT and see if it finds anything else that might be exploitable. Okay, it saw the server-side request forgery in that private submission fetch function. It is using URL lib request URL retrieve, so it's able to pull things down and uncontrolled file upload. Okay, so that's not strictly file upload. You're able to pull any content from arbitrary URL and putting it there, which is basically file upload, but it is restricted to localhost. It will need to be bypassed, which it doesn't explain how, but it notes that it could be. Patch reversal, no content type checks, error disclosure, and sure, hey, HTTPS, whatever. Basically gets the gist. Let's do one last challenge for our last sort of uh, trick here. This is worker B. That is a mix of server-side request forgery and local file inclusion. And again, we have the application that's able to pull all this. However, this requires HTTPS connection, so it's a little bit more of a gimmick. Let me go ahead and copy and paste everything here, and we will lay these out between the transfer challenge, the museum challenge, and the worker B challenge as our three code snippets and applications that we could give to ChatGPT and see, is this safe? To see, look, does it have a good idea of what is vulnerable code and Following that, will it generate vulnerable code after? Okay, so it sees the server-side request forgery token just right there. It notes that it needs to have an HTTPS URL and session-based logging and error disclosure not too big of a deal in my mind. Lack of input sanitization. Even though we're checking for HTTPS, there's something else that might get in the way. Debug mode. Okay, yeah, that is in debug mode for that case because the local file inclusion is used for like a Flask works or bin debug exploit, blah, blah, blah. No content link check, no timeouts, no HTTPS, blah, blah, blah. So it basically, got the gist of the attack chain, but it doesn't know exactly what gimmick in URL lib request URL open is the reason why you can do local file inclusion and some of the SSRF. So that was a fun Safari ride, but now let's actually put ChatGPT to the test. We've used GitHub Copilot and just a little bit of some visuals in the video, but I think ChatGPT is at least the one most frequently updated and learned and smart enough to say, look, unless you tell me, give me vulnerable code, it's not going to give you vulnerable code to its own best knowledge. Well, Let's validate that. I'm going to start in a clean, fresh chat GPT-4 session, and I'll say, give me a full stack application for a web-based to-do list program. How about that? Certainly, creating a full stack web-based to-do list program involves multiple steps in several technologies. Here, let's crank out some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and Node.js with Express and SQLite as our database. Ooh, okay, so we got some dependencies that we could work with here. We'll create our server.javascript file, spin up the Express library, and have a database that we could work with in memory, fetch all tasks, and return sort of, okay, JSON, sort of like an API-like structure here that we might be able to use. Oh, and other gonna use React? Holy cow. And actually, Axios. Okay. Hey, while ChatGPT is cooking this up, I would love to take a second to tell you the perspective from today's sponsor, Sneak. Artificial intelligence coding tools like GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT can help you generate code fast, but it might not always be the best idea. Generative AI coding tools are only as good as the data they're trained on, so they may often include vulnerable code in their suggestions. That's risky, and ultimately, you'll need to spend time fixing the vulnerabilities later, or responding to an incident. While AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot can speed up development, they should be paired with security tools to make sure that generated code is secure and will actually save you time. That is where Sneak comes in. Sneak secures your code faster than you can generate it. If you're using a tool like Copilot, then you should use Sneak alongside it to help secure the AI-generated code. With Sneak, you can see what vulnerabilities are hiding in your code, open source dependencies, and containers. Sign up for Sneak for free with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash sneak-ai. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video.
All right, now let's blindly copy and paste everything that ChatGPT just gave us. We'll get back to our terminal, we'll create our application, installing a bunch of these things here to build up the dependencies necessary for our app. Let's spit together our server.javascript file. Let's grab Axios for our front end. Let's create our React front end. We'll copy and paste that code in. Now we can start the back end server that is fired up. And now let's start our front end and that should fire up just as well. All right, here we go. This is our localhost 3000 application and I could say uh subscribe to John at there we go. Nice and easy. I didn't have to do anything because ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot or whatever generative AI we wanted to use just built out all the code for me. Now, I'll be the first to say this code looks fine. Like, I don't know. Okay, maybe the dollar sign uh, variable expansion for string templating is a little bit sketchy. Uh, but you could, you know, nitpick whatever you wanted. Uh, the server.js. This looks like parameterized statements to work with SQL. That's totally fine. None of this looks bad and it's not insecure off rip. But if I may, I'd love to remind you about something that ChatGPT or Copilot or Generative AI might not have any context for whatsoever just because it can't reach that far back up the branches. You know what I mean? What I'm talking about is if I start a new terminal down here, take a look. Remember we have all of these node modules that we just installed for this application? All of these? Like, look at how many there are. This is crazy. Take a look at our package.json file. All this thing needs is Axios, Body Parser, Cores, Express, SQLite, whatever. But each of those, like let's move into Axios, digging into that folder and checking out its package.json, the dependencies here are kind of wild. Chalk, Coveralls, Cross Environment, DevNull, Gzip, Handlebars, Karma, Minimalist. And that's just one library. We have already tons and tons and tons of these, but you already know that. It's Node. It's gonna be massive. So what if any of those those higher up the supply chain here, right? Those sinister dependencies. Maybe we aren't familiar with any of the vulnerabilities that could be present in those. ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot is just gonna be none the wiser. But if we're using another tool like the static analysis application security testing, we might be able to uncover a heck of a lot more vulnerabilities. Take a look. Sneak, just firing it up here, ran about 54 issues, six of them high and 28 medium, 20 low. Now again, take these with a grain of salt, but there are a couple that could be really worthwhile, like the server-side request forgery tidbits here in different aspects of node fetch, regular expression denial of service, maybe not extremely likely, insecure XML parser, that could certainly be bad news bears. This is significantly more than what ChatGPT would tell us about. It probably doesn't even have any context and wouldn't even know all the things that could be making up all of those other modules, dependencies, and libraries still necessary for your application to run. In fact, let me ask it. Is this code safe? Same question I was asking it before. The code provided serves as basic implementation for educational and illustrator purposes. Okay, like Stack Overflow, whatever. We just copy paste as we want, manipulate it as needed. There is no authentication or authorization, no input validation, no SQL injection opportunities here, no error handling, using an in-memory database, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not trying to go all off in a tizzy trying to say that ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot or AI-generated code is bad all the time, a thousand percent. It's not to say, oh, it's going to be insecure, it's vulnerable. Maybe sometimes in some cases it might be, but I do want to bring this point, and this is my thesis really, is that like, look, you can synthesize these. You can like have these things run in harmony together. Like SaaS tools, like the static analysis, static application security testing, and some of this generative AI can supplement each other, have them work together. Like if I were to go back to our examples before, when I use that transfer capture the flag challenge, I ran that through not just ChatGPT, but Sneak just as well, and I could see what vulnerabilities are you seeing and what are you seeing and what are you not seeing and where's the delta and how can I compare and contrast. Sneak running on transfer is really interesting. It found about two high vulnerabilities and one medium. It denotes the SQL injection right away. The path traversal, eh, I don't know. It wasn't extremely weaponized in the case that I use. And of course the deserialization of data, I'm glad that it tracked that down. If we move back to the museum example, where we had a lot of server side request forgery. It's interesting to see what sneak will come out. It says that there are four high severity issues, but it's all cross site scripting, path traversal, path traversal, path traversal. Didn't even track down or denote the private submission fetch and some of that SSRF capability. One of my favorite examples is if we were to try 
to run this on worker B that has the server side request forgery and local file inclusion. The gimmick is neither chat GPT nor sneak honestly was able to track down. Okay. The fault here lies in that URL retrieve function or URL open. Cause you can actually pass in an like Octothorpe, you know, the hashtag pound symbol, and that will sort of redirect to specify whatever schema you want. You can have it run file as the beginning that you want here and totally ignore including HTTPS in the query string. There are tons of videos or walkthroughs and write-ups on that worker bee challenge if you have any interest and it might give you a little bit more context here. Sneak on the worker bee challenge is interesting. It only found four code issues, two medium and two low. Debug mode is enabled, yep, which ultimately gives them code execution. Debug mode is enabled, password hashes, password hashes. So didn't even see the server side request forgery or local file inclusion capability. I do wanna show you good and bad what things see what things don't see and how you can compare and contrast. Anyway, that's my thesis. You can use generative AI to write code crazy fast, but sometimes maybe it could be insecure. It's getting better as time goes on, but you can supplement and have these two work together when you use a tool like some regular security tooling. Static application analysis, security testing, all those things like Sneak as a prime example can really, really help out your development cycle, your workflow, and help you write secure code fast. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of fun to be able to kick the tires, throw my CTF challenges at ChatGPT, and maybe you should do the same and see what's going on and then throw it at Sneak. If you're interested in Sneak, link in the video description. You can check it out for free. And hey, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.